Hey, Samuel. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to um, meet you. So, I don't know if you know this, but PFF has you rated as the number two cornerback in the NFL so far this season with a coverage rating of 85.1. And that begs the question, who outside of the Indianapolis Colts has been the toughest receiver that you've had to cover so far this year and why? Um, mm. I don't know. Uh, I feel like kind of this game planning for Tyreek was kind of – different just because he get the ball in so many different ways. Uh, you can, It's not just strictly just straight up line up against him and play ball. Uh, you can give it to him out the backfield, jet sweep. He can line up and, you know, get the ball. So I feel like that kind of game plan was kind of like different. Thomas? What's up, Sam? I got two questions for you. First, uh, D'Amico Ryans was your first defensive coordinator in your rookie season in San Francisco. Uh, what were some of the most memorable ways that he was able to get the best player out of you? Uh, just really just pushing me every day to uh, just strain uh, and, and and play hard and work hard. Uh, as long as you did that and did that for D'Amico, he didn't really uh, he didn't really like you know trip about a lot of stuff, but. You had to give maximum effort and I had to go hard every single play, every single day and be consistent with it. So uh, he kind of instill, helped instill that in me. Uh, and that's why I kind of like don't really take plays off and you don't really see a lot of laziness in me because uh, that was kind of instilled in me from the first day I walked in the NFL. Uh, and can you describe how easy or difficult it was for you to move to Indy and have to trust new teammates basically on the fly, both on and off the field? I mean, I played ball my whole life, so I ain't never really just always played for one team. So uh, getting to know new people is kind of like it was it was it was the, it wasn't a different situation that I haven't been through before. Uh, so just getting to know the guys off the field and I helped uh, build the relationship on the field. Uh, that was kind of the easy part. And then even with the game plan and the scheme, it was similar to what we ran in San Fran. So just once I started learning the verbiage and how they how they talked over here and start speaking the same language, it became way easier. It took me like a couple of weeks to, you know, really get it down pat. Marcus? Hey, just to piggyback off of that, um, since you came to Indy, a lot of fans have been raving about your production on the field and how good you've been playing. Uh, have you noticed any of that or have you like seen any uh, of the fans, you know, just praising your gameplay or having your support? Uh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I didn't, you know, been to Chipotle before and somebody didn't notice me and I didn't even know I was really getting noticed that much out here. Uh, and then obviously you got my friends and family that really keep up with the media and, and stuff like that and it made sense stuff to me. Uh, and be like, oh, people talking about you. They got this article and stuff on you and, and bring it to my attention. But I don't really like pay attention to that on my own. I just try to work and just try to, you know, make Sundays look great so that people can talk and say good things about me. A few more here. Uh, Dustin? Um, so, I mean, you're obviously – in a very different situation than you probably imagined yourself in when you're playing in preseason with the Niners this year. Um, not only have you moved on with the Colts, which is a surprise via the waiver wire, um, you've already played more defensive snaps than you've ever played in your career in a season. Um, so really just like what is in your mindset with having to switch so quickly to Indy from San Francisco, but also just seeing your role drastically change so fast? Uh. This was something that I all didn't work on uh, all off season to get to this point, uh, thinking it was going to be with San Fran, but obviously it didn't go that way. So I kind of already been preparing myself for this for this opportunity and this moment. Uh, and then just seeing it come to light, it's just like now I'm at the point to just not let it go and just keep taking advantage of every op that keep coming, especially with you know going through adversity in my career already. I feel like that just kept that chip on my shoulder and just pushed me and put fire in me to just keep going harder every day. And hopefully at the end of the season, I could continue to say that I had a great season and and uh, have great years coming up. We have two more here, Lawrence. 
Hey, Samuel. Um, my question for you is, uh, you've been here for a little while, and I'm just curious, uh, either team, you know, whether it's San Francisco or Indy, who's the guy, since you've been in the pros, that has really had the biggest effect on you, not just, you know, how you play on the field, but in general, you know, dealing with NFL life and notoriety and things of that nature? Uh, man, because it's really multiple, it's really multiple people that, really helped me out um the most it's kind of hard i i it's, it's different it's different it was people helped me out in different ways like you got the amador lenore that you know that's really was like my i guess you could say as a, a best my best friend over there on the niners uh him and Ambry thomas uh so just dealing talking being with them every day and uh you know we done went through the same stuff from rookie year to you know, now uh, and face like kind of like the similar adversity of, you know, trying to get on the field uh, and being with them every day. They help me still just like keep we keep like that dog mentality mindset, uh, working out together, getting each other better on and off the field. Um, and, you know, that camaraderie of just, you know, getting to know different type of people. Um, and then you got Fred Warner that pushed me especially this off season. Uh, I was working out with him uh, right after the season. We took a couple couple weeks off and then I went back to the 49ers facility and was working out with him uh, that first half all the way up until OTAs. And just seeing how he worked and how he carried himself as a professional uh, and kind of mirroring him, uh, that really helped me also in just watching how he go about his everyday life at, uh, at an elite level. Um, so watching that and being mirroring that, that helped me. And then you got, uh, Chavarius Ward that, that second half of this off season that I was really working out with every day down in Texas and working on my game and him just, you know, taking the time and bringing me along to let me see how he worked and how, and different techniques, learning different techniques at DB and how he think at DB and, and introducing me to his trainer that helped me a lot with my game. Um, it's just, you know, them was like the more, four main people that kind of like helped me get to this point. I mean, then you got, you know, my family and stuff that, you know, just keep me uplifted mentally. But in terms of my game, them was the four main people. We'll go last one here, Dustin. Um, so sp you've spoke a little bit about some of those players that have really impacted you and coaches that have impacted you, um, back in San Francisco. Um, what what has it been like having like a veteran like Kenny Moore who not only has played at a high level but knows the area of Indy so well with his career really taking shape here? Um, like what has it been like being able to lean on Kenny on and off the field? Oh man, it's been great. Just especially you know just getting to know the system and how the philosophy and everything is here. Uh, I, me and Kenny we talk every day on and off the field. So uh, and that was like my draft comparison. So I it was, I was kind of hyped to, you know, be around him every day. And, and obviously he got a lot of production on the ball and even at, at nickel in terms of physic, physicality. So just talking ball with him, watching film with him every week uh, and just seeing how he think about the game. And then he also helped me, you know, learn the philosophy of this defense and how they go about things. Uh, he helped me a lot for sure. And then you got JB. JB uh, Julian Blackman, he he's so smart. He know he know a lot of stuff that's coming, um, and he know the defense, the ins and outs of the defense. So both of them really the main two that helped me, you know, get comfortable into this defense and settle in here. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Thank you. All righty. We'll get started here with Dustin Adams. Hey, Alec, thanks for taking the time. You know, problem. Um, so, so early in your career, Alec, um, you had a fair share of critics um, via not 
jumping right on the field and having instant um, gratification when it comes to production. Um, a couple of young players on the team are kind of going through that now with Anthony Richardson and your fellow receiver and Adonai Mitchell. Um, what, what advice, I guess, can you give those guys from early in your career and now seeing everything kind of play out this season? Yeah, the biggest thing, I mean, number one is just not to listen to anything anyone says online uh, because, you know, it's just – they don't see the full picture. They don't really get to, you know, they're not in the building every day seeing the seeing the work being put in, seeing the things, you know, it's it's such a football is such a complicated sport. It, it it takes so many things to to go right, just especially for like a receiver specifically. You know, think about it there's the play call, there's the, the protection, there's the quarterback. So it's it's a lot of things kind of that go into it. So um, you know, and when your sample size is so small earlier in your career, like you can you see some guys like will make a will, will play really well their rookie year and then maybe kind of fade off and then other guys who might not be as well and then play well so you know it's then that sample size is small it's kind of hard to judge a player I'd say Lawrence Owen hey Alec building off that a little bit actually um we all know that there's a lot of stuff that a wide receiver does, as you said, that it's not even doesn't show up on stat lines. For instance, you know, the run blocking and stuff that has been brought up in the past mm. uh, recently. Uh, but there's something else that I've noticed um, with you specifically. Uh, earlier this year, you have been getting a lot more targets downfield and you're gaining the respect of defenses, which allows you, even if you're not getting the targets, to be able to help clear safeties out from underneath, like what happened a couple of weeks ago when Downs ran that out and up and you ran a post, you cleared that safety, allowed Downs to get that touchdown. Mm. Um, is that something that is discussed a lot with you guys in the wide receiver room about, you know, running your routes at 100% all the time and, and being able to help your other guys out, even though you're not getting the targets at that time? Yeah, no, I understand. I mean, a lot of times generally my routes are the the, the deepest route out there and, you know, a lot of times concepts are, uh, you know, deep and intermediate and in a, in a uh, short route, you know, and usually, typically it's a lot of times the tight end or the running back out there in the flat kind of on the short route. Um, and, you know, then it's usually the receivers working more downfield. And so for me, I, when I'm going downfield, especially early in the season, we hit a couple of those big, big shots, big plays, uh, and then defense will adjust. They're going to be soft of that. They're going to make sure they do, they keep it in front that creates a lot more space between that, you know, in that kind of intermediate zone, then, uh, and then you can still hit those big, you know, 20 to 40 yard gains there. Um, you know, you catch it on like a crossing route or something like that. And then you're able to run for a little bit. So. Thomas. Yes. I like, I got two questions for you. Uh, was there a moment when it began to click for you um, that that was your role on the team that you would be able to confidently make those catches in traffic downfield? Um. No, I mean honestly, honestly for myself, I've always I've always known that, that I could do that. Like if you go back and look at what I did in college, it was a ton of that. Um, so that's kind of always been my mentality. I've kind of always been banging the table, saying, "Hey, like just give me a chance, to throw it downfield." Like even if there's like it, it doesn't have to be open, it doesn't have to be wide open. If it's one on one, like I can go make the play, you know. So, um, it just takes building that trust in the quarterbacks, the coaches. Um, just to just to understand, you know, like this is not just like a a play where a lot of things can go wrong. Like I'm a, I always pride myself in, in either making the play, getting a, getting a pass interference, or having it be an incompletion. I, I try not to ever let them intercept the ball because that's that'll stop the coach coach from calling it or the quarterback from throwing it. You know. Uh, and lastly, is there anything that helps you stay locked in and ready to make that explosive play downfield when you know you may just get three or four targets a game? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I think I'm kind of used to, I'm used to it. I did a lot of that kind of all my life. I've been in offenses where we didn't throw the ball a whole lot and, you know, I was always there to make an explosive play. So I, to me, it's not, it's not like, oh man, I need to, I obviously like the ball thrown to me as much as possible, but I, I've kind of I've been used to not getting a ton of targets all my life. So, um, I, it's just it's just football for me. I've been on a lot of teams that won a lot of games, and usually, uh, you know, it was kind of like a ground and pound type team with just play action over the top. So, Christopher Jackson. Hey, Alec, thank you for your time. Do appreciate you coming out. Um, thank you. Two questions. Um, in year three, 
what's really been the catalyst to you consistently kind of getting off to a hot start, whether it's, you know, being able to make plays against guys like Jerry, Legereus Sneed, or even really just being able to just get behind the defense and do what you did in that case. Yeah. Um, so just like what, what has been yeah, like, like, like what, like, and, and I'm going to say to kind of expand on that, it's just like walk us through that mentality this year, because you seem much more locked in this year. And I mean, it seems like everything's just kind of been clicking. So just walk us through like that mentality going into this year, where yeah. I think the wide receiver room is probably the most talented that it's been, I'm going to say maybe in over a decade or so. Yeah. Um, I just think, you know, we, I always talked about in college, my, my coach had a saying, he said, say high tides, raise all ships. Um, and, you know, it's just like, we were, we had a really good uh, roster at Cincinnati, a lot of, a lot of depth, a lot of good players. Yeah. Um, and that was something that we kind of took pride in because he just, he was always pushing the younger guys. Like, even though, you know, maybe you have Sauce Gardner and Kobe Bryant, you know, two basically all American corners starting out there, like, you're that younger cornerback. Like he was pushing them to to work hard, continue getting better, and kind of just like raise the talent level of everyone. Cause then it's gonna push, you know, it's gonna push Sauce and Kobe to they're gonna see that, feel that coming, and they say, Oh, we got I got I gotta be better because I got this guy behind me who who can plug in and play whatever. So um that's kind of the mentality. Uh I, I felt that a lot this year. Um and yeah, so it's it's been good. I think it's just something I've I've been comfortable in. That's kind of how I I played football, you know, before the NFL. So, and that's kind of how it is in the NFL across the board. Think about it. You know, it's all professionals at this point. So it's a bunch of good players. Yeah. Do a Absolutely. few more here. Uh, Marcus. Yeah, for sure. You mentioned um, earlier about the jump ball catches and things of success. Uh, of course, you got a few years in now. Uh, has the game, do you feel like the game has slowed down for you at this point or anything or like? Yeah, no, it definitely has. Um see a lot of the same looks a lot of, it's a copycat league a lot of teams run a lot of the same stuff you know so and then you see the same uh teams a lot like especially the divisional teams you see the same players so you kind of you know get to you're like oh, okay i know i know what type of player this guy is you know uh what type of defense this team does, runs you know so it kind of it kind of i think makes things a little bit a little bit simpler we'll do two more here lawrence okay um, so my, my question is you haven't really had a lot of targets before this year, uh, whether that's, uh, d play design or, you know, quarterbacks not looking downfield or whatnot, but it seemed like a lot of people thought that once Anthony Richardson got, you know, healthy and was able to play, and then we signed a backup that is not afraid to throw it downfield as well. Was you expecting a lot more targets towards you down the field this past offseason uh, as much or a, as many as what you've gotten so far uh, yeah. when you yeah. saw that? Yeah, no, I um, and just especially too, just big emphasis in our offseason here. The coaches kind of came back. We um, after OTAs, you know, they probably do a study on, on our last season and how how we did. Um, and, you know, they, a big thing they had said for us is that we just needed to be more explosive. I think, especially in the passing game, I think we were, we wanted to have more explosive plays, like over 20 plus yard passing plays. Um, I think we were pretty low in the NFL on that. Just, it was kind of a, how our offense ran last year. So there, they, it was a huge emphasis on just, you know, kind of big explosive plays, whether that's like, you know, uh deep ball thrown on the field or like a crossing route but just anything that's kind of thrown on the field we can get like 20 plus yards so i knew for me that was that was kind of music to my ears because that's that's my game right there we'll go last one here dustin um so alec obviously we don't know yet um the status of jonathan taylor potentially playing this week but getting him back on the practice field um and the possibility of him being back on the field in the coming weeks um as a receiver as someone who relies on the passing game for his production mm -hmm. um can you talk a little bit about what it would be like to get a guy like taylor back on the field and get that dynamic runner back there and how that can open things up for you downfield yeah no it's, it's huge he's a super uh, talented player you know a guy that's played a lot of great football for the Indianapolis Colts. Um, so just having him back in the offense just adds a whole new dynamic. You know, he's a guy we can just rely on to not only get the tough yards, but, you know, break out a huge 80-yard run. So it'll be great to have JT back out there, uh, you know, hopefully soon. Thanks for your time, Alec. Yeah, thank you.
Thank, Thank you. Have a great day.